Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor Brandon and Pastor Yang, so for allowing me to share the Word of God. Uh, this is not farewell service. <laughs> this is a special service for, for us because we will not stop to work with you guys as a partner in the kingdom of God. So only move to a new location, right? Our spirit still the same. We are in the family of God. So today I want to share about handling failure. Uh, how we overcome our failure. What should we take if we fail? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this wonderful time. We want to meditate about your word. Please, Lord, anoint my mind, my mouth, so every single word come out that's from your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So hopefully, as our prayer today, if you see today is 10 for, this is the opportunity to do a work better than yesterday. Pastor, what about work? What work you're talking about? You do your duty as a husband better than yesterday. As a student, as a wife, as a pastor, as a minister, do better than last week. My prayer, today message, will be better than last Sunday. And I hope through this message, you and me will gain a healthy perspective on failure in relation to your calling, enable you all to rise from, from failure. So that's why I, I have prepared this message for me and for you. So that's why I try to avoid to point like this. <laughs> because four finger go to me. So let's learn together. As I pray a lot, today's message will be a bless for me and for you. So failure make us disappointed. Sometimes or might be always we become angry. So should we stop to anger? So what about the failure you have experienced in your daily life? I know some people who don't want to fall into failure must rise from their failures. So I prepared only two verses today from Joshua chapter 8. When we read and and when we see more closer to this, our scripture reading today, where Joshua, as a man of God, he rose from failure of seizing city of Ai. And then the Lord said to Joshua, then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, Take the whole army with you and go up and attack I. For I have delivered into your hands the king of I, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to I and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourself. Set an ambush behind the city. Here, by believing God, following what God said, Joshua managed to capture the city of Ai. Belief and enthusiasm 
to achieve the best, the best result make us able to achieve the best result in our lives. Amen? Even though we have failed so many times in life. So that's what the author of the Hebrew books remind us. As believers, we invited to continue to hope in God alone. Not give up easily when you and me fail. When you see on the screen, we cannot run away from fail. But our goal, we can reach our goal through the fail after fail after fail and after fail. So actually, my title of my sermon today more complete handling failures and then do it again. <laughs> try again, try again, fail, fail, try again, try again. Brother and sister in Christ, with another simple sentence from the Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrew 12. I found another simple sentence. Indeed, every reward when it is given doesn't bring joy but sorrow. And then it produces the fruit of truth that gave peace to those trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the weak hands. I got problem with my left arm almost for two months. So I cannot push too hard. Even I cannot lift up too heavy. <laughs> yeah. Because I have Kesia's car to rotate the, the tire rotation. That's the dead for. <laughs> change oil, change the tire, not change the car. <laughs> when I help her to rotate the tire, the last tire I hold too long and then just yeah couple it up that's the German's word <laughs> twist <laughs> twisted okay so this this verses say therefore strengthen the weak hands a bit weak yeah continue continue what does it mean to the next uh, the next one Strengthen the way for your feet. Remember, when you divide the Bible, there is one verse that indicate this in the middle of our Bible. Psalm 19, 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Believe it or not, you starting read the Bible from the cover until the last page. And then this is Psalm 119, 105. That's in the middle of the Bible. We need the word of God to guide my, our faith to be a light for my path. Before I mention that God gave us a vision with the new name of our group, our fellowship, Lightcast Fellowship. So that location in the village, country village, about 1,200 something unit. And there is a fellowship hall, capacity only 80 people. I think that's good for started. 80 people, and then God will guide us to, 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 to do more and more uh, serving him. So no matter how small or how big our light is, but in the darkness, it will be still or, or visible, right? That's our faith. No matter what, our group started very small, but 
we believe that everybody can see our light. So please continue pray for our ministry as your sister church, as your partner in the kingdom's business. Yeah. Light is something that necessary to navigate this world of darkness. We need light to guide us safely through the unforeseen dangers that await us. So according to the last sentence in Hebrew before, so that the limb doesn't fall but heals. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Rise and follow in God's footstep in your life. That's what we must do when we fall from our failures. That is the experience that we have before. I believe you and me knows there is one thing we hope that we have a perfect track record for. It is usually a visa application track record. So you always want to be accepted when we apply for visa wherever you go, right? What's that? Because when one of your visa application is rejected, the rejection will have a negative impact for the following application. You get my point? So, uh, we have experience in 1997. 1997. Me and my wife, with someone him, <laughs> apply the visa for come to United States. And then we got it. And then the expiration for that visa only three months. And then after we decided, because there is the Indonesian church in New York City, uh, wants me to become their pastor. So after vacation 1997, we went back home. And then we have prayer heart. Pray hard and asking God's direction. And finally, we decided to move out to New York City. And then we tried to apply the visa again. But at that time, almost three times we applied for the visa. Only me and my wife again got visa. And then my kiddo. Kenny and Keisha, at that time Keisha, nine years old, Kenny uh, about three years old. They were rejected. It's not, it's not uh, with, with the red ink. Sorry, we rejected your, your children's visa with the special reason. At that time, their their passport attached to my wife's passport automatically. <laughs> yeah, if, if my wife's got the visa, automatically children get visa. But now, at that time, now. And then finally, uh, if, sorry, even my wife went to Singapore, so U.S. Embassy in Singapore, who knows, can, can approve the visa. No. Same. They rejected. And you know, after two weeks, we got visa, only me and my wife. Two weeks later, there is a big, big riot in our country, 1998. So maybe the embassy staff knows that oh, we'll be a ruin in this nation. I just assume that you will be run away abroad. So that's why I hold your children. <laughs> so you have to come back to uh, your country. But finally, me and my wife went to New York City without children for five months. 
And also, you know, it is not easy situation, separation time between parents and children. When you see Kenny's face right now, he was a little bit sad because separate with Noah and Marilyn. They are in Ecuador right now. <laughs> so I, I, I can feel it, Kenny, as a, as a dad. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember after five months, and then my wife picked them up. And then Kenny, three years old, and just came to my wife. Well, it's very hurt here. <laughs> because five months separation. So God allowing us to have that special experience. To have the separation time between me and my wife. Because she has to pick them up, yeah? And for me, separate from my children almost five months. I know, it's not easy situation. Especially when we heard the loss of our beloved mom. My, uh, my wife's mom. My mom-in-law. After we arrived two weeks in New York City. And we were not able to go back to Indonesia. Why? Because we were applying to get religious visa. <laughs> if my wife back home, the lawyer just told me, the attorney just told me, are you ready? Your wife cannot come in within two years. Oh, my God. <laughs> separate with my children five months, and then we'll be separate with my wife and my children two years. No, 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 no. And then finally, no, we, we didn't going back to Indonesia. So remember, everything happened for a reason. God has a perfect plan for those who love him. God has been prepared everything for equipping us for serving his church. So many people who have the same situation separation with their, their children, separation with, with their family for temporary. Yeah? But God allowing us to have those situations in our lives. So now, almost 26 years already, we have been in U.S. serving God, dealing with all kinds of people. Yeah. So... I know you have your own experience. Yeah? So we can share to them. We can comfort them with all experience that we have been through. God always good to us. Amen? Sometimes we as a human being, we feel that it was not good. It was not his will. You see, they rejected us. You see, they, they, they not approve us. They hate us. They, they, they don't support us. They're against us. As a human being, when we face uh, not pleasing our heart, that's easy for us to say, it's not God's will. If God's will, they will support me. They will pray for me. They will hug me. They will pray together with me. Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Here, truth that set you free. So a similar thing happened in Joshua's journey when he led uh, God's people, Israelites, into the promised land. When you look back into Joshua chapter 7, we can discuss more detail about they, their uh, journey to lift out their calling to occupy the promised land. So you will see in that a small mistake caused great loss to entire nation. 
So when you see the uh, two verses, four and five, their condition at that time was fearful, discouraged. Let's see how significant their failure was that caused Joshua and his people to be fearful and discouraged. So about 3,000, 3,000 men went up, but they, but they were routed by the men of Ai, verse 5, who killed about only 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gates as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this time, uh, at this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. You see, out of 3,000 men who fought, how many people died? 36 died because of their failure. So we don't we don't underestimate or we don't disregard human lives at all. But isn't it somewhat normal in the battle if 1% of the soldiers then die in the middle of the battle? Not only that, number 36 gives us a little picture of the number of the second generation Israelites who, who could fight. You see, in Numbers 26, take a census of the whole Israelites community by families, all those 20 years old or more who are able to serve in the army of Israel. How much is the total number? 601730. Church, when I read in Joshua 8, tell the story of Joshua and Israelites attempting a second time to fight the city of Ai. Ultimately, they succeeded in conquering the place that the previously marked their failure. But what we need to realize is attempting the second time was not a natural thing for them. So we find that it was not Joshua who's, who consulted the Lord about the second attempt, but the Lord who had to command them to try again. Not only that, the Lord also said, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So here, failures will always look big. Add their burden to the next attempt. Another video clip that I, oh, no, 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 another video clip. Another picture, can you show? Or oh, before that? Okay. To reach the goal, The left picture through the small step. Sometimes our ambition yeah, wants to take a big step, easy to reach the goal. I remember that first, if you faithful through the small thing, God will give you more responsibility. I believe that when I started a new fellowship with a small group, I want to show to God I have to be faithful. I have to do seriously with the wholehearted because my principle, if you faithful in the small responsibility God will trust and give us with a big responsibility. So, church, here we sit together through the 
summarize the entire event in Joshua at eight, yeah, through the first two verses, through the Lord's command, we can learn a few things when we have faced and accepted failure and trying to rise and try again. The first one, very quick, your calling is bigger than your failures. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you. Go up and attack. I. It is the good news that after failure occurs and after failure is faced, accepted, and corrected, the Bible records the word then. Word then here is not, oh, uh, so the sentence more uh, more perfect if I edit then. That is meaningful then here. Yeah. We even see that it was the Lord himself who wanted Joshua and his people to try again. Try again. The Lord himself wanted Joshua and his people to continue their calling. Did you know the Lord did not cancel their calling because of their failure? As long as they accepted, as long as they learned from their failure, their calling was greater than their failure. So the same applies to our lives. Our failures can have a significant impact on us, but realize that our calling is greater and more important than our failures. Next picture, Pastor Brandon, this morning or last night, I check your status. There is a picture of this guy. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Yeah, of course, many of you know him, Kobe Bryant. He's the extraordinary, even iconic basket player basketball player. So my grandson told me when we going to the church, Opa, grandpa, yesterday I have a game and, and our team won. And then his mom put on the Instagram and my, my wife just, just uh, proud of him. You see Isaiah from far, he can shoot and so many times. So, yeah, we are lucky because we are the family of basketball uh, fan. <laughs> okay, so I just want to show to you this figure, this character of Kobe Bryant. He was the one of the greatest basketball player of all time. However, many uh, Kobe went through the process to be a success a basketball player. He was not immune to failure. Again, in the same year when we visit United States, 1997, during Kobe's third season in the NBA, when the Lakers were almost won to be uh, what in the Western Conference final. So I, I read through the article, Kobe committed a failure that cost his team. He made four elbow shots, embarrassing shot, even didn't even touch the ring. But long story short, resulted on, uh, in his team losing the chance to enter the final that year. But in an interview, Kobe said he was fine. I didn't feel like a failure or a shame. So a reason he was fine was his focus was on his dream. What a dream? Becoming the best basket player. Not only uh, not on the public failure in that game. His dream was 
bigger than his failure in one game. And then when, when asked how to have that mentality, what he said, Kobe answered, you got to get over yourself. It's not about you. Learn why you miss. Set up a plan to train better. That's it. So the same applies to our lives. Our failures can have a significant impact on us. But realize our calling is greater and more important than our failure. Success. I quote, I copy somebody quote, success means every successful person has a painful story. Every painful story has a successful ending. Accept the pain. Get ready to success. Pains stand for positive attitude in negative situation. Sound good, eh? <laughs> when you get experience to make you pain, remember, show your positive attitude. Even though in the negative situation, when you face struggle, the struggle you are in today is developing the strength you need for tomorrow. Don't give up just because you are struggling. Doesn't mean you are failing. So I believe that God put you where you are now in step with Christ Church. I believe that God put me in the country village, Hurupa Valley. It's not by accident. Because great people are not produced through easy process. Great people must be through hardship and tears. So everything happened in our lives, remember, for a reason. When your eyes are on the calling, failures will only get you closer to it. And then, you are bigger than your failures. Again, Joshua 8, if we look, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, Take the whole army with you. Go up and attack I. For I have delivered into your hands the king of I, his people, his city, and his land. Remember, church, with the first 3,000 soldiers he sent in Joshua 7, that's impressed that Joshua might, might not have gone to fight with the first soldiers. But the Lord used the pronoun they, they, for the soldiers attacking when communicating with Joshua. Here, is it possible that Joshua didn't go to the battle in the first attempt? Regardless of whether that is true or not. But the Lord still used the same leader for the same calling. Even though the leader has failed. But the sentence... Take the whole army with you. Church, when we have faced, accepted, and learned from our failures, we need to realize that we have been blessed. We have been changed. Maybe last couple months, your leaders, Pastor Young, Pastor Brandon, even Pastor Zam, yeah, Maybe mention about the, the, some character from the Bible. So when we bunch back a time, a second time, realize that you are not the same, you're dealing with the same battle. You have changed. Surely your identity has changed. Your value has changed. Your instinct has changed. Even your decision-making has changed. And naturally, the outcome can change too. But once again, it all starts when you have previous there to face and accept your failure. 
you will be changed by it. And now, you are not the same you anymore. Without doubt, you have become bigger than your failure. Because God put you where you are right now is not by accident. Remember, if you want called as a great people, you are not produced through easy process, but through hardship and tears. Isaiah 41, verse 1, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Last illustration. Again, about the visa application. When I was pastoring a church in Atlanta, Georgia, there was a lady who once tried to apply for a visa to the United States. And then for the U.S. visa, she needed to undergo an interview. That means unpleasant experience. However, due to various reasons, the interview results showed that her application was denied. This not only cost her financially, as the application fee right now is so quite expensive, maybe $200 per application. But it also affected to her future application. She couldn't immediately reapply for a visa. He had to wait, uh, she had to wait at least six months. Then she reapply again. And then the system would show that she has been previously denied for how many times? Six times already. Six time times $200 per application is her. But a visa rejection make next application more challenging because of the track record of the previous rejection. And church, you know, finally, she got visa on the seven times of her interview. Seven times. She only succeeded in getting her visa on the seventh attempt. Can you imagine if she had given up on the sixth attempt? The more she failed, the more she understood how to answer the question. So the more she failed, the greater the change of the success for getting the visa. So here, the same applies to our lives. Failures often add a burden to the next attempt when someone tries to bounce back and try again. Bounce back is not an easy, it's not a natural thing to do because we have already recorded our failures in previous attempts. But on the second, uh, on the seventh attempt, their question was very dif different from the first, second, and so on. But as long as we learn, do not let failure be a reason for fear, but make it a reason to be more courageous, to try again and try and try again, because basically there is nothing under the sun. If there is nothing new under the sun, imagine how much better you become at living after experiencing failure after failure and failure. You become a different person facing the same battle. But the third and the most important thing to realize is God is bigger than your failure. God 
is bigger than your failures. Failures. Do to I and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Do you know what caused Joshua failure in Joshua chapter 7? The Lord was not involved in the war planning. But in the city of Jericho, the Lord gave detailed instruction to Joshua on how to conquer Jericho. The first attempt at I, Joshua didn't include the Lord. But now, in the second attempt, the Lord was included. And Joshua even emphasized, set the city on fire as the Lord has commanded. See to it, you have my orders. So here Joshua and the Israelites manage how to conquer I on the second attempt. Because this time they did it together with the Lord who's bigger than their Failure. So that's why we need your prayer support, church, when we will start on September 8th. The same battle, we have to reach out the resident of our place. I thought to Pastor Yang, I have to push myself. Because over there, in the new location, in the new field, I have to push myself. I have to preach in English. <laughs> if I preach in Indonesian, yeah, Chitra can, can interpret it. But this is a big, big challenge for me. Yeah. Because we have to open our door for all nations, as you did. We thank you so much to God, especially to you guys. You opened the door for us. And we enjoy, we can feel it, our, our relationship as a sister and brother in Christ. So we just asking God, God, bless the pastor here, bless the deacon, the elder, the whole family of Step With Christ Church. We cannot bless them. Let God bless them in return. That's our prayer. And also, Please continue. Every morning, you have the morning prayer. Please mention Lightcast Fellowship, and especially for Pastor Ramdan. <laughs> but over there, they don't know Pastor Ramdan. They know Pastor Danny. <laughs> so when you come in, come to the security, where are you going? Pastor Danny. Ramdan, Dan, Dan, Danny. <laughs> Only... <laughs> Only step with Christ Church can, can even the youth can call me, I Pastor Ramdan. Not everybody outside. Some people outside call me. When we were in Singapore for two years, my, my professor called me Rendang. <laughs> Beef. <laughs> What's Rendang? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, brother and sisters, this is is such pleasure, privilege for me. You allow me to share the gospel and to be honest with my expression, a million thanks to you guys. You have shared. You are so nice. You are so kind to us. Yeah. And also, this is approval that your prayer support has been answered by God. And we, we will have a new location for how many, or for how long? I don't know. Just follow the God's step. Yeah. We just want to, to follow God's direction, God's instruction. Yeah. This passage is really uh, touch our heart. Involve God. Listen to his instruction that he gave to Joshua. Very detailed. This morning, I uh, write down a note 
if God uh, be with us, yeah, if we're not for God who was with us, we would not have come this far. And it would be impossible for God to take us this far if only to fail. God, Emmanuel, always be with us. And the last one, this is your choice. Fear has two meanings. When you see the real from Instagram or for wherever, you will see this one. Forget everything and run. That's the same for fit for you. Or the second one, fear for you. Meaning is face everything and rise. Because God is bigger than your failures. You are bigger than your failures. And your calling is also bigger than your failures. So the three questions as our reflection before I close with a prayer. How difficult is it for you to rise from failure? What is your calling that you can use as something more important than your failure? Are you currently struggling with a failure that makes it difficult for you to move forward to rise? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. I know, Lord, a lot of mistake, a lot of our weaknesses when we listen your word because we use with our knowledge, with our uh, understanding. But Holy Spirit, please make this, this message perfect and we can catch the important point from the uh, message today. Thank you, Jesus. Hear our prayer. Forgive our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Shall we stand? Let us pray and asking God's blessing upon us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen.